Hey, welcome back to Distant Signal and another video. Today, I wanted to show you how I did some compositing work inside of Premiere instead of using After Effects. Now, why Premiere? Um, well, if you're like me, using After Effects feels like... Let's not stand on ceremony here. I want After Effects to feel like... But it feels like... So, after doing a shot for Milkshake that took about three months, I decided two things. One, never assume any visual effects shot is going to be easy. Two, just don't do visual effects shots if I can, if I can help it. I don't think we need visual effects to tell good stories. And uh, since I'm on my own here in this little corner of the world, I just try to avoid visual effects in general. But sometimes I got to do it. I had to do a music video where I realized some visual effects work was going to be needed in order to set up a little bit of story to make the music video make sense. So I got a call one day to shoot this video. He wanted me to shoot a video where he just hangs out with a clown. And to make it worthwhile for me, I needed some story. And the concept was this guy has a birthday, makes a wish, and a sad clown shows up to do whatever he wants. I felt like the piece needed a little bit of context. Why a clown? Why does he wish for a clown? And I thought what could work would be that he's just obsessed with clowns. I mean, clowns effectively is prisoner. So I wanted to inject a little bit of story, a little bit of character in order to set it up. So I decided that I was probably gonna have to do some visual effects work because we didn't have props, we didn't have time. So the first thing I needed to do was find some royalty free clown paintings specifically. So that's what I did. I went to Google, I searched for clown painting, and then I changed the, the right settings. When you go to the images, you can go to settings or tools and you could sort all these images by whether or not they can be reused or their, their creative commons, those kinds of things. So I was looking for royalty free or creative commons images. So I found uh, this clown painting here, the Forenzi clown from 1910. You should probably try to find an image that is huge. Big, high resolution images are best. Uh, you just have a lot more flexibility with compositing if you have really high res stuff. And then next was a royalty free clownfish. So another thing that I realized I needed was I needed to add reflections to the painting to make it look like they actually lived in the space. Now, if you notice, the reflections aren't quite um, right, but they, they were good enough. And so I went into Photoshop and I took both paintings and I added uh, reflections. So to get around After Effects, I decided to use some of the most basic things you would find in After Effects that are also replicated in Premiere, like scaling and Gaussian blur, adding beveled edges to make it look like there's a frame around the picture. And the reason why I like doing it in Premiere is because it's all real time, unlike After Effects, where you have to render every little frame in order to see what the composition is gonna look like. I can just do it in real time with Premiere. It's so much faster. So I added the picture here, the clownfish behind Dave. I added a drop shadow. Also, it's a very easy tool that you can find in After Effects, but it's just all real time here. So I'm, I don't wanna waste the time rendering everything in After Effects. So when I added the drop shadow, after the drop shadow, I added the beveled edges. And then in order to make it look a little more cinematic, I added a post zoom, but I also needed to track that zoom in the painting itself. So I needed to scale and change the position of the painting so that it looks like it's actually changing in relation to the frame size. And the same with the clown painting. In order to make it look like it's existing in the same reality, when you move the camera, everything has to change in perspective. The painting has to grow, the reflections have to grow, everything has to change in relation to the changing frame size. If you don't do it, it's gonna look really strange. So now we can see the finished product. We can see that the paintings is now move in relation to the frame. Uh, they look like they're more or less in the same space. And now we have some kind of context as to why this person in the film uh, is actually getting a clown because he's obsessed with clowns. It kind of makes sense now. Whereas before, it was just a birthday wish for a clown that came out of nowhere. So adding this context helps a little bit and sell the reason why he might wish for a clown on his birthday. My level of expertise is, is low enough and I'm willing to admit that. And I'm willing to admit that I don't want to learn much more. This was a perfect case test for using Premiere for visual effects. If you need to do anything more complicated, don't be afraid to hire somebody or don't be afraid to take several months to learn how to actually do something before you do it because it's going to take you a lot longer than you think. Please subscribe, 
Check me out on Patreon. Check us out on Steemit. It's my favorite cryptocurrency. I think it will be yours too. And that's it. Blech.